Hey guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Nia Dragon and I'm just another cozy artist here on the internet. Today I'm going to be going over a little bit about how I edit my videos, namely my vlogs and process videos. I'm mainly a vlogger but I do have a series here on YouTube called Too Many Hobbies where I document a lot of the process of me trying a new crafty hobby. I also have a TikTok where I shoot and edit videos similar to this and I always get questions about my filming gear and how I edit. So I just wanted to make a more formal video about it. Before we dive in though, I want to make a quick disclaimer about the gear I'll be discussing today. I've been creating YouTube videos on and off for a couple years now, just in sporadic spurts of inspiration. And during that time, I've like really gradually upgraded my equipment. So some of my gear is on the pricier side, but that should not discourage you from making your own videos. It's really important to note that you don't have to make significant investments to get started. I've had a comfy corporate career for a while and that is what has given me the means to upgrade my equipment over time. But there are plenty of budget-friendly alternatives to everything that I discuss today that can help you make really wonderful content. The most important thing about video creation is creativity. All right, without further ado, let's get into this. So let's talk about my go-to gear for vlogging. First and probably most importantly is my camera, the Sony ZV-1. I've had this little powerhouse for a couple of years now, and honestly, I'm still discovering new ways to use it, but it's such a great camera, especially for a first time vlogger. I find it to be pretty compact. I like that the screen flips out so you can see yourself when you're recording, and it's pretty simple to set up. You don't need to have a lot of camera expertise. I won't pretend to be the most knowledgeable about this camera because I'm not. Like I mentioned, I am still learning how to use this thing every time I create a new video, but some general rules of thumb. I always try to shoot in 4K and over the course of making these videos for the last couple months, I have realized the importance of getting the right tone straight out of the camera. I do prefer a warmer tone in my videos and part of that is due to when I shoot, but also my camera settings. It is much harder to add warmth in post if the footage is more cool toned. So I spent some time fine tuning my camera settings so I can achieve that really warm, inviting look from the get-go. As for the tripod that I use, I use this Yukos tripod. It's really popular on TikTok. In fact, I actually started shooting videos again on TikTok and this was the tripod that I got to make that a little bit easier. But yeah, I think it is still kind of viral on TikTok and for really good reason. It's a great tripod. As you can see, it's really lightweight and portable. Like it becomes really compact so it's not too I mean, you're obviously not gonna carry this in your like shoulder bag you, but in a little backpack or a large enough purse, this is like pretty easy to carry around. And because it's so portable, I think it makes setting up shots really easy. One difficulty I had with filming before this tripod was setting up the shot. And with anything that you're trying for the first time, you want to try to find the most frictionless solution possible. And I always felt like it was such a chore to like set up my tripod tripod and get the shot somewhere. But I think this tripod makes it really easy. Another thing that I love about this tripod is how easy it is to go from horizontal to vertical filming. And it's as easy as adjusting this knob. Now I could, if I wanted to, attach a phone adapter here and yeah, I can uh, shoot with my phone but I can also just as easily attach my Sony ZV-1 here and shoot horizontally. Audio is also super crucial in vlogging. I don't just use the camera audio, so I use an Andy Cine mic attachment. I think it's a fantastic one directional mic that significantly improves the Sony ZV-1's built-in audio. And for me, I truly find myself battling between this mic and this one, which this is my Blue Yeti with a cute pink pop filter. It is my go-to for voiceovers. Of course, I use these mics for two different reasons. I have the option of using my Andy Cine or my Blue Yeti when I'm in studio, but obviously when I'm out and about, my Andy Cine comes in handy for capturing audio in less controlled environments. Also, I know the Blue Yeti objectively sounds better, but I am lazy and I hate syncing audio in post. So I like that the mic attachment allows me to just get to editing without having to do that sync up. Yeah. 
So one super important thing to being any kind of video editor or really a creative at large, let's just say that, is having a file management system. Frankly, vlogging is really difficult without this. There is so much footage that you collect throughout the day or even an entire week or month. So what's made vlogging a lot less overwhelming is developing a file management system. My file management usually looks something like this. The month, the tentative title of the video, and any individual chapters. Breaking down footage into chapters and segments is super essential for my workflow. It allows me to kind of like see all my footage clearly. Otherwise, I just have a lot of footage with no rhyme or reason. So for instance, if I'm documenting a day out, my folder structure may look something like this. March at the very top level, and then fun day out being the name of the vlog, and then each individual chapter being named Boba Tea, Shopping, Crochet. And so I think having this kind of folder structure makes it even easier to transfer files from my SD card onto my computer because it's as simple as putting each clip into its corresponding folder. So for editing my YouTube videos, I use Premiere Pro. I've been using it for over a decade now, so it is pretty second nature to me. However, I'm well aware that Adobe subscription is not always financially feasible. So those looking for a more affordable alternative, I really highly recommend CapCut. I think it's a really great tool, especially for those on a budget or beginners just trying to get your feet wet. I specifically use it for my TikTok videos. And if that's something that you're interested in learning more about that whole work flow, let me know in the comments down below and I'd be happy to create a more dedicated tutorial on it. So back to Premiere Pro, one of the most game-changing habits that I've developed is the use of templates. They've become super invaluable to me, especially with the creation of too many hobbies. And if you have a signature editing style, this really helps you kind of keep the consistency across your videos, especially for keeping segments similar or keeping the graphics and captions and all of that good stuff kind of, you know, consistent. And boy, is it a time saver. So I really highly recommend it incorporating templates if you aren't already in your Premiere Pro workflow. Vlogs are a little bit harder to template, but I do have just a little bit of a template for some of those more repetitive segments in my vlogs. I have a template that includes my like most commonly used sound effects and some graphic overlays that I reuse from vlog to vlog. And again, that really helps me with visual consistency across my videos and creating a recognizable style. Okay, so I'm gonna start by creating some necessary folders like sequences, sound effects, graphics, and footage. I'm gonna take some sound effects that I got from Epidemic Sound and drag them into my project because I know that I will be using these camera shutters a lot across a couple different videos. Whatever sound effects or graphics you know you'll be using a lot, I would, you know, upload to these folders. And then once you have all of the assets that you know you will be using across several different videos. We're gonna go up to file, save as template, and then you can name your project whatever you want. I'm not gonna save this because I already have like a couple of existing video templates, but that is how you would go about making a template in Premiere Pro. So then if we want to actionably use the template that we just made, we can go up to new, new project, and then up at the top here, um, these are some of my templates, but the one that you save will appear here. I'm just gonna go with my YouTube template. All right, and now you will see the folder structure that you made along with the sound effects that we saved in there. And to take it a step further, just to show you my workflow for importing the footage that I need for videos, I will go to my finder. And let's say I've created this folder just for demonstration purposes, but I've got my top level which is the month, the vlog, which I usually put the number of the vlog, whether it's like the first video of the month or the second video, and then all the subfolders and chapters and of things that I captured that I want to edit. When you open up these folders, there is footage inside. I just put in some footage I need to sort through later. But anyway, so you have your created folder structure and then all you, you actually want to do is drag these individual chapters into your footage folder. It'll import the files 
So now when you are ready to edit your video, all you have to do is go to the folder and open it up and like all your footage from your concert night or your trip to the craft store will be there. I also tend to take the clip that appears first in the folder structure and drag it down to this little sticky note looking icon. Um, a little plus sign will appear and it will create a new sequence. And then let's just pretend this is footage of me at a concert, but I'll go ahead and right click on this new sequence we created and click rename and let's just call it concert. And then I'll take that sequence and drag it into sequences. And then because I'm kind of lazy, I usually will just duplicate this sequence again if I am just starting a file out and I'll go ahead and delete the footage out of here and I'll call this one my hero sequence. So now we have our sequences. And so I created this hero sequence because I like to think of every part of my video as a chapter. And the hero sequence is sort of the book that contains all of the chapters of whatever story I'm trying to tell. So in theory, right, I'm just gonna duplicate this for demonstration purposes. I'll go back to my hero sequence and add in the intro, the concert, and then the end of the video. So then it's a lot easier for me to even plan out my day as far as like, oh, I know I need to tackle editing this sequence because it's in a rougher shape than this one. And that way it's not just like a ton of clips on the timeline that you're just staring at and you're really overwhelmed by. It's really helpful to break things up into chunks but yeah that is a little bit of how my workflow is in premiere for music i rely on a subscription to epidemic sound this video is not sponsored epidemic sound if you want to i'm here epidemic sound is a comprehensive royalty-free music library for creators there's a super vast selection of music there and it's also regularly updated with new music which is something i really appreciate because as a creator i'm always striving to create something that feels fresh and unique and for me there's something about hearing a familiar track just one too many times that takes me out of the viewing experience. So I really appreciate the regularly updated catalog of music on Epidemic Sound. To streamline my workflow, I've installed the Epidemic Sound plugin for Adobe Premiere, which, which has significantly improved my music selection process. It's not quite as much of a task because typically I'm taking myself out of the editing process to go and like look up music, but this keeps it all within, you know, the program, very contained. However, I don't think that the plugin is perfect. Honestly, I need to obviously update it to check out what's going on in the latest version, but I still will go between the web and this little plugin to kind of find the perfect track for whatever video I'm, I'm editing. Just because sometimes I do think it's a little bit difficult to search by genre, but overall I like how easy it does make it to get a new track quickly. So for example, I can I can play it within the program and if I decide that I want this progressive house music in my video, I'll, all I have to do is download. It appears in my project panel and then I can drag it onto the timeline. So color grading. I found that color grading can really elevate a video and make it feel even more immersive or dreamy or cozy. It can really change the mood. I personally really love how my footage looks straight out of the camera, but a little tweaking can go a long way. I do prioritize shooting during the morning hours and there's just something about natural sunlight that gives the footage like a warmth and depth that's really challenging to recreate with studio lights. And while studio lights definitely have their place, I do kind of feel like they often fall short in creating that same warm ambiance. Right now there's like a nice soft golden quality to the footage that I'm filming right now and I'll probably only do like little minor tweaks to make it just that more inviting. But yeah, morning light. Morning light and also evening sunsets are considered golden hours and that is when the light is probably the least harsh and the most flattering. So yeah, I like to shoot 
cute in the morning to achieve that like beautiful warmth. However, if I am going to adjust it, here's a little bit on how I do that in Premiere. So here is some footage that I just got straight off of my camera. And I'm gonna walk you through a little bit on how I would color grade this. I'm going to select the footage and then come over to this panel. And if you don't see it in Premiere, you can always go up to window and then scroll down to Lumetri color and it'll appear the right of your project. I tend to stay mainly in this, you know, basic color correction um, because again, I typically like how my footage comes out of the camera with like a warm sort of tone. So I just make really small adjustments. Like for this, um, I probably would add back a little bit of that golden light that's coming in from outside and tinge it just slightly pink for a kind of film look to it. I'm really stretching it when I say film look. Yeah, um, I don't tend to play too much with the saturation because it's my skin tone and my hair. I can like tend to become very orange if I mess with this too much. Um, for this, I might adjust the exposure just a little bit. There's not quite a science to this. Um, it is just kind of like adjusting as you see fit to each their own. There's no correct way to color grade, but this is just a little bit of my process. For me that I, I find that color grading varies from shot to shot, even if I'm staying in one place, just because I am working with the sunlight. Sometimes the sun is in a different position. Sometimes it goes behind the clouds, so every clip is different for me. So you might get through color grading and see like, oh, well, it's not quite that different from like how I brought it in. Um, if you wanna see the difference between the footage color graded and uncolor graded, you will wanna go up to this FX toggle, to the toggle bypass on or off. And you can see this footage, while it came in really nice, I still really like the warmth of the clip. I just enhanced it a bit. And I took away a little bit of that green. It really favored like a more greenish, yellowish tone in this clip. Um, just a little fiddling goes a long way. This definitely feels a lot more warm and romantic now that I've done a little bit of color grading, but this is the very basics of color grading and I try not to do too much, especially considering I Put out videos every week so yeah for text overlays i have created a essential graphics template which is really easy to create sometimes in my videos you'll notice i have like maybe a chapter card to signal we're going into like a new thing um this is one that i've used a lot lately since i've been crocheting but all i have to do is like drag it over from the essential graphics panel so let's say we want to make a caption just like this and template it so that we can use it across a couple different videos. I'm gonna go over here to empty part of the timeline and I'm gonna just write in, hello, hello world. And then of course I'll come over here and customize it in the essential graphics panel, which again, if you do not see that in your Premiere Pro, uh, set up, you'll want to go to window and then go down to essential graphics. So let's say this is what we want to template across a couple different videos. After we've got like the look and style that we want, we're going to go down to this clip on the timeline, right click, and then export as motion graphics template. You'll want to give it a name. Uh, I'll just put demo caption here and then click on okay. And then when we go over to essential graphics, we'll wanna go to browse, which is our gallery of essential graphics that we can just uh, drag and drop into Premiere and we'll see our hello world. So all you have to do as far as making this, you know, an actionable template is adjust the captions and yeah. And also because this is like a graphic that we've just dragged in, it's got its own attributes so it won't change anything that happens in this first instance of the graphic. Okay, I think that just about covers everything. And I hope this answered some of y'all's burning questions about how I film my videos. I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. I am considering doing a video all about how I plan my videos in Asana and Notion. This includes the scripting and like creating a shot list and finding inspiration, all of those like ideation things. So if that's something that you would like to see from me, let me know down in the comments below. And if you'd like more 
exclusive tips and tricks and behind the scenes, feel free to check out my Patreon where I go in depth a lot more about not just my video editing process, but my art process as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.